Good morning. You're watching Ask Profit on NTV Profit. I'm Smriti Chaudhary and with me is Alex Matthew. And for the next 30 minutes, we'll take all your stock related questions and get them answered by our fundamental and technical guests. So to write to us, you can uh, uh, message us on a WhatsApp number that will be on your screen in that's there and uh, or you can also write to us on any of our social media channels or through the YouTube live chat I'll be monitoring that as well so do write to us uh, on any of the platforms but uh, um, let me introduce you to the guests for today we have with us Mr. Gaurang Shah of Jirjit Financial Services and Amit Puptani of Nirmal Bank Securities welcome uh, Gaurang and Amit and thank you for taking the time out now, uh, before we jump into the questions, markets are uh, looking great today. It's been a good start to the week, Alex. And uh, do give us a little update about, uh, I can see that it's still uh, hovering above 22,000 levels, but uh, give us a little bit about what stocks are pulling up the index. Well, uh, that 22,000 number, Smriti, is looking very pretty uh, for everybody that's <laughs> tuning in and what a move it's been, right? And we were looking at a few of the metrics that have brought us to that point. Reliance Industry is one of the biggest contributors to the move up over the last 1,000 points from 21,000 to 22,000. It's looking strong in trade today as well, up about 1%. Uh, and you've got quite a few others. If you look at uh, the sectoral performance, uh, you have the IT index that continues to rule the roost. However, it is uh, come off from the high point of the day and it is currently trading with gains of about 2% or thereabouts. HCL Tech among the top gainers, but Wipro, one must say, is uh, arguably the stock of the day gaining quite significantly. HCL Tech about 2.8%, Wipro about 6.7%, 6.8% off the high point of the day. But we are focusing on one particular stock and that's Tata Consumer. Uh, and this is a stock that is down in trade today. It has announced a couple of major acquisitions. Uh, the two companies that it is acquiring are uh, one, you have Capital Foods, which has the brands Ching's as well as the Smith & Jones brand. And you also have Organic India. Both of them have a cumulative uh, enterprise value of about 7,000 crore rupees. And we have spelled out some of that, but I'm quite curious about what Gorang has to say about this latest update and whether or not you should consider buying at these levels. Gorang, what do you make of the latest announcement? I understand that they're going to have to conduct a fundraise and they have in fact gotten board approval for a rights issue. What do you make of the entire scenario as things stand? And should a fund for the investor looking for long-term gains get into the stock right now? Thank you, Alex, and uh, morning to all of you. Also, uh, as a disclosure, we have a buy call on Tata Consumer Products for a pretty long period of time, and we're maintaining a hold on the stock. Now, the thing is, in an in, in, when you are in FMCG business, Alex, it is very important that you have a sizable amount of uh, market presence in terms of uh, products that you offer across different verticals. And having said that, we have heard a couple of announcements from Tata Consumer about uh, their uh, uh, willingness to take over uh, existing businesses in terms of competition and increasing their presence across different verticals. Along with that, there are some very strong power brands like Tata Sampan, which is also expanding its product profile across the board. And, you know, it's like uh, when you are in uh, retail clothing business, for example, there is an XYZ company which has taken over large number of labels, which is familiar. Similarly, in FMCG business, it is very prudent that you have a sizable and a decent market presence. So to do that, Alex, you may have to spend a little bit more in the short to medium term whenever these kind of acquisitions roll out and they actually become a ground reality. So for our short to medium term, it might put some amount of uh, you know pressure on the cash flows on the balance sheet. They might have to borrow to do this acquisition. But long term, given the kind of new acquisitions and expanding your horizons 360 degrees, you garner a huge market share. And by the virtue of that, you are able to score better numbers compared to your competitors. No, fair point. Do you have, so you have a buy call, I would assume, and do you have a target that you can share with our viewers? Well, so I will referentially give you a target because we are in the midst yeah. of QT earnings, Alex. 
Uh, and uh, it wouldn't be fair on my part to give target because the, we have yet to see the numbers from Tata Consumers. But yes, we do have uh, a buy call on Tata Consumers on the fundamental side from a long-term point of view. Buy, stroke, hold, whatever you want. Fair, fair point. All right. Point taken. Uh, we will jump into the queries in just a bit. But just because we've hit that 22,000 mark on the Nifty 50, I want to hear Amit's very quick view on the benchmark and where do we go from here. Amit, that uh, key level has been taken and uh, we're actually holding above that. So what are the key levels that you're watching for the benchmark now? Good morning. So if you look at the overall market scenario, we have seen that the breakout has been witnessed in the last week of trading session on the Friday. But uh, currently, Nifty is trading in the range of resistance zone of 21,900 to 22,100 mark. Once if Nifty spot manages to get close about 22,100 level, there will be a fresh breakout again in the market for the second leg of buying towards the 22,400 to 500 range. But the downside, the base has been created right now towards the 21,800 level. So till the time Nifty is not going below 21,800 level, till that point of time, we might witness a buying scenario and buying opportunity it will be witnessed in the market. At this point of time also, I will recommend a buy recommendation right now for the level upside towards the 22,400 to 500 level for next one to two week of trading session. Understood. Let's uh, start with start off with the questions now. This one's from uh, Bastin from Jhansi. He's uh, talking about Tata Motors. Now, uh, he... He, he wants to know if he should continue holding it. Now, last week we saw Jela came out with the numbers, uh, with its numbers and pretty strong, strong numbers there. Uh, I'll come to you, Gorang, on this. Tata Motors, uh, still a positive view. Would you recommend uh, holding on to this uh, counter? Well, the more we speak about Tata Motors, Shruti, the less it is, isn't it? And I think my good friend Alex has uh, a long history about our view on Tata Motors, uh, even during uh, troubled times, to be very honest. And now that the tide has turned, I think we our commitment towards uh, uh, investment in Tata Motors as a long-term idea has only got reinforced with the latest commentary, uh, with the numbers, and of course, a very strong possibility of the balance sheet becoming debt-free. Uh, hangover in terms of JLR is now a thing of the past and it is contributing quite smartly to the balance sheet. Their product profile in terms of uh, compact sedan, compact SUVs, entry-level SUVs, high-end SUVs, electric vehicle portfolio that they have, EVs as we call it, is huge and humongous and it's only going to grow uh, going forward from here on. Add to it the twist of commercial vehicle business that they are into. So if I have to put all this thing in perspective, we still maintain a positive call on Tata Motors. Okay, all right. So we've got a medium-term query from Jay Krishna, uh, Jay Krishnan, who's writing in from Cori Code. Uh, this is on VST Tillers. So I'll I'll come to you on the uh, charts on this one, uh, Amit. What do you make of it? He's bought at levels of three thousand eight hundred and eight. Uh, he's wondering whether to hold or sell and shift to another stock. Uh, what would you recommend that he do? I definitely he should shift to another stock because we are seeing that the counter has been continuously witnessing a sell-off for zone no from the upside of 4,000 levels and currently we are seeing that the counter has given a breakdown level and we might witness more 300 point fall downside towards the 3250 to 3200 level so at this point of time exiting the position and converting to another stock would be more recommendable. Understood. Next up, we have a question on from Rajesh Maheshwari. Uh, he's writing in from Singapore. He's talking about Schaeffler India. He's bought the stock at about uh, 3,050 levels. The stock is currently trading around uh, above that price, 3,300 3, levels. He wants to know if he should continue holding it. Now, in the last one year, it's only given about 21% returns. Amit, uh, for, for a short to medium term, how does it look? Definitely, the momentum is slow, but if you look at the overall setup for the long-term scenario, counter has been continuously trading from last one and a half year in the range of 2800 to 3200 mark, but uh, we are seeing that the volume is continuously getting added on. So there will be a consolidation breakout in this counter. It might take some more time towards the 3450, the breakout is a level. Once the stock goes over 3450 level, then there will be a fresh buying initiated in the counter. From there, we will see aggressive buying towards the 4,000 to 4,200 levels. So you should hold the long positions as the counter is being into consolidation good. Once the consolidation breakout comes about 3450 level, his level will definitely get a great, a great opportunity on the upside towards the 4,000 to 4,200 mark. Okay. 
uh, we've got Mohan writing in from Orissa and he's asking about South Indian Bank. Uh, he's wondering whether to uh, hold on. He's bought at levels of 27. He's got 2,500 shares. So it's more or less where the current market price is. Gorang, any specific commentary on this particular counter? If not, could you give us a view on the, uh, on the banking space? Which ones you like? So first, let me give you a, our view on the entire banking and finance, Alex, and we're quite optimistic and upbeat about the uh, loans, advances, deposits, CASA ratio number, and the loan book growth number that uh, we've heard just before the Q3 numbers, uh, we saw curtain raiser. Uh, we do have a, a hold or buy recommendation on South Indian Bank. The only problem in this trade or investment is, Alex, that uh, this gentleman has bought in at a, a little bit elevated level. Uh, if you get debts, you can definitely continue to add on to it. And we've seen a decent improvement in terms of earnings for South Indian Bank, which was not the case some time back. Okay, all right. Next up, we have a question from uh, Naresh Thakur. He wants to know if there's more steam left in the realty sector. We've seen great demand numbers and the, even the realty index has run up quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and he's particularly talking about uh, India Bulls real estate. Should he buy into that? Gorang, uh, real estate as a sector and India Bulls real estate. You know, to be very honest, I think it's uh, after being a very notorious sector and a high beta sector, uh, this real estate sector has got uh, more discipline now than earlier. And that is thanks to the various uh, regulatory changes and introduction of new uh, regulation like Real Estate Regulation Act, RERA as we call it. Uh, sector is good. It is high beta. So one needs to have an elevated uh, risk appetite. But uh, the... Uh, company that has been selected my humble request to all the viewers of NDTV profit is that just don't look at the uh, price of the stock which is cheaper in a particular sector and buy it because that is not the criteria if you're looking at long-term investment idea as a disclosure on india Bulls real estate we had a coverage we have dropped it because there were a lot of issues that concerned this particular company and we did not think that it was appropriate to continue with that coverage Having said that, we like names like Godrej Properties, DLF, and Prestige Estates. All right. Specific view on a few of the stocks in the real estate space. Uh, Short-term query on Bandhan Bank. And uh, this one's coming in from Pandyan Subramanian, who's writing in from Madurai. This one's for you, Amit. Based on what you're seeing on the charts, um, what would you say for a short-term trade or a short-term view on Bandhan Bank? Look at the short term scenario, the counter looks on the negative front because continuously we are seeing that the stock, whenever it's gaining the opportunity towards the 255 to 60 level, there is the supply being witnessed. And currently, right now, also, if we look at the setup, uh, counter is trading at 50 DMA level. Once if it goes below 225 mark, then there will be again a short sell off in the counter towards the 215 to 210 level. So, it's for my recommendation, new long position not to be created at this point of time. Short can be created once counter goes below 225 level. All right. Next up, uh, we we have a question from Vaibhav, and uh, he's written to us on YouTube. He's talking about PNB. Now, Garang, I know you have spoken about the banking sector as a whole, but specifically on Punjab National Bank, he's bought uh, shares at a price of seventy-five rupees. He wants to know if he should continue holding the stock for the longer term. Yeah. So we have a hold recommendation on uh, PNB, uh, and uh, as I spoke about South Indian Bank in the earlier query. Uh, the situation, earnings and outlook for some public sector banks have improved dramatically, especially with PNB because PNB at one point of time had exposure to a lot of vulnerable sectors and one of the big cases which is known to in the public domain, uh, I don't want to go into the specific name. So yes, from a 40, 45 rupees stock, it has almost doubled now, close to about 100. Uh, we maintain maintaining a buy and hold, and our sense is that uh, PNB, State Bank of India, Canara Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India, uh, these are some of the names wherein you are going to see significant amount of improvement in the earnings as we go forward. Okay, fair point. Um, to the viewers that are asking questions, I hope you're tuning in. Uh, we can't possibly give you the answers that are discussed on the show on chat because we're, we're talking to you live there as well. But we have to slip into a very quick break. We'll take a few more questions on the other side, so do stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're watching Ask Profit, and this is where we get questions to all of your stock-related, uh, or rather, all of your stock-related questions answered. And uh, by the way, Mohan, if you're tuning in, you missed the answer that Gorang gave you on South Indian Bank. He says that you might just have bought at a slightly elevated level, but he still has a buy rating and therefore a hold rating on South Indian Bank. And so Mohan has bought it very close to that level, 27. Uh, the next question that I will take is from Mukund. Mukund is asking about a couple of counters that he bought at IPO stage. He's bought uh, Rainbow Hospitals uh, and he's also got Tata Technology. So understandably, not too much data for Amit to talk about. But uh, Gorang, what was your specific view on the IPOs and should somebody take some money off the table right now? Well, see, it depends. Uh, firstly, uh, honestly, Alex, uh, on Tata Technologies, we had a subscribe recommendation from a long-term point of view. 500 floor and stock reached the highs of 1400, if I'm not mis mistaken, and somewhere trading close to about 1200 rupees right now as we speak. Uh, it depends. If you only bought it from a short-term point of view, then I think you should act according to what your wisdom tells you to do. But if you are not in a, in a hurry and if you have time by your side and you can stay invested for a longer period of time, I would advise him to stay invested in Tata Technologies. On Rainbow, unfortunately, Alex, I don't recollect whether we had an IPO note or not. So I would refrain to comment on that. All right. Next up, we have a question from uh, Rajiv uh, from Mumbai. He's bought 2,000 shares of Aditya Birla Capital at 190. The current price is below that, around 178 levels. He says that it has not been performing in the last one year. I think it has given bench about a 20% return, so equal to the benchmark there. Amit, uh, how does it look for the for like a one year term? Should they continue holding it? The stock hasn't done much in the last uh, couple of uh, months. Yes, uh, if you look at the capital, the momentum is quite slow. If you look at the setup also, rounding bottom formation has been witnessed in the counter above 182 only. We might see some buying momentum will be continued in this counter, but till the time it's not going about that level, till that point of time, we might see stock to be trading in the range bound session. But if you want to convert into another stock, there is another counter which looks positive right now with Shami Hotels. Shami Hotels looks positive. We recommended this counter to our clients on the, uh, for New York Peak also for 2024. Overall, uh, if you look at the setup for Shami Hotels, both on the fundamental and technical ground, the counter looks positive for the upside range toward 280 to 350 levels. Fair point. Uh, this is a slightly... Um... Okay, I'm going to try. Uh, Patel Engineering, Gorang, uh, we've got a viewer, Raghuram Patro, who's writing in from Bhubaneswar, and he's bought at levels of 55. He's got, got a long-term view on this particular counter. Stock is currently trading up about 2.3% in trade at 65 or thereabouts. Do you have anything specific that you can tell him? Unfortunately, no, Alex. We don't have this. Fair point. So if you have a long-term view, then on the charts, Amit, uh, and you look at the longer-term charts, what can you tell him? For trading perspective, the counter looks positive. The counter has given a flag pattern breakout in the long term structure. As per the setup, we expect the counter to stretch towards the 85 would be the first resistance zone. Once if counter clears 85 level, then we might see the counter to going towards 115 to 110 level. So overall setup looks positive. Long portion can be initiated at this point of time also. And if he is holding the long portion, the stock loss which need to be maintained right now is 56. Once the stock goes below 56 level, then only longs need to be exited order setup looks positive on the upside towards 85 to 110 levels. All right. Next up, we have a question from Santosh Pillai. Now, this one's for you, Gaurang. He is a newcomer and wants to invest for the longer term. He doesn't mention the sectors. So, from across the board, what stocks would you pick for the longer term? Your favorite? If I if I might just add a small point here, and Smriti, allow me to uh, you know make this a little bit nuanced, because I think Gorang, a lot of our viewers may be tuning in for the first time and looking at these markets, twenty two thousand levels on the Nifty Fifty. You know, some might argue that the valuations are just a tad bit expensive and from that perspective would you suggest a staggered approach and which ones according to you have not participated and could in fact be uh, something that you can consider right now yeah, absolutely alex so uh, you know discipline is one of the most important thing that you should have in stock market whether you are investing or whether you are booking profits i think you need to be disciplined first of all so first of all welcome to the party uh, this party is going to stay for a long time as far as the indian equity markets are concerned 
uh, from a long term point of view we remain absolutely optimistic and if you are a newcomer well couple of uh, words of advice uh, first of all stock markets are exposed to all kind of risks internally as well as externally you have to have elevated risk appetite in case if you decide to come and invest in stock market don't listen to anybody and invest in the stock market just by any uh, verbatim that you listen into uh, do a little bit of homework at your end in terms of little bit of study understanding about which sector and company you are buying and don't go and buy cheap stocks with single digit double digit valuation just because they are available at that price buy quantity buy buy quality don't buy quantity uh, i beg your pardon buy quality don't buy quantity buy quality means buy small number of stocks of good companies rather than buying large number of stocks of a lesser known company or an uh, not so known company so if i if we have and and part part investment alex of course i agree with you 22000 we have not been there we have not seen that this is the first time and anybody would feel that uh, high anxiety at these kind of levels but over a period of time longer period of time i think there are miles to go before we can pause you know alex to be very honest intermediate Gaur- option will come Sorry. so 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 point taken but which stocks would you identify at these levels maybe four or five that he can take so i'll i'll come to that i'll give you five different sectors and if i will give you five different companies so from banking hdfc bank post merger the balance sheet is very good uh, amongst the diversified plays two names one is reliance from the diversified business that they have second one is lnt from the cap goods engineering so you have third name cement we are extremely positive about the entire consumption theme so you have ultra tech cement or you can possibly go for dalmia bharat which is a mid cap name in the cement pack uh fifth would be uh, from the banking pack i beg your pardon from the it pack and over there i would go for a mid cap name something like a kp it tech gorang for that uh, i hope santosh you've got your answer five stocks to look into for the longer term next up we have a question from rajesh maheshwari and uh, he's talking about mrpl now mangalore refinery we have seen a good uptick in the last 3 4 days it has hit uh, if i'm not wrong upper circuit also in the last trading session it's up uh, up in about at 8% right now as well amit i'm going to come to you on this what's the trajectory that you see from here on now the or if you look at the space of the sector the counter each and every counter has shown some buying momentum from last one week of trading session that too with the volume part uh, now the counter looks a bit uh, on the higher zone because if you look at the overall setup the risk reward is not at all favorable to create new long position but whomsoever is holding a long position should place the trailing stop loss towards the 160 level once if stock goes below 160 level then only we might face some profit booking scenario but once again if counter goes upside to Towards the 180 level, and it gets uh, stable above 180 level, then we might see again fresh buying to be initiated in this counter towards the 200 to 210 mark. Okay, fair point. Uh, Gorang Amit, thank you so much for joining in and for giving us all the views that you did. And viewers, hopefully, uh, we have uh, helped you uh, somewhat, even if your specific question has not been answered. We'll be back tomorrow with uh, more of the same. So do tune in at that point. From Shruti and myself and the team that put the show together, thank you so much for watching. Do stay tuned. This is NDTV Profit.